Council meeting your order, 9 o'clock, March 2nd, 2017, Policy and Procedure Committee. Call the roll, please. Here. 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 Bill. Present. Signat. Present. Sure. Here. Okay. Are there any public comments this morning? And then we'll go to the committee chair reports. Russell Bill. Highway. Highway. Oh, we got some <coughs> lightings for some uh, pipe culverts and a few things. Nothing really abnormal this month. Uh, taking care of some township drainage issues. But it's quiet. Pretty quiet month, it looks like. Unless we get a blizzard before that. Okay. Uh, Burns, management and judicial. Management, I guess we'll be dealing with farm management issues and judicial will be taking regular reports. Marvin, the tax committee. The usual reports, plus we'll be looking into getting some kind of program for uh, animal control for low-income people to get help with spaying and neutering. Uh, job description for animal control clerk. Okay. Let's we'll skip the chairman comments and go to the ESDA report. Uh, 
whether it's about the seminar on the 14th of the year I mentioned, and then the workforce on the 21st of the year I mentioned. Um, yeah, we have been doing a pipeline safety training on the 23rd of the year I And um, if it were first, I plan on taking a vacation while it lasts me one month. Last month's generic report, we brought up the idea or whatever of changing the name from ESA to EMA. Emergency Management Agency and adopting the logo. Everybody had a copy of this last month. Is there any discussion or further thoughts about that? Eric? I uh, asked the state attorney about any potential legal or liability liability issues with changing the name as well as with the logo. He said that both were fine. If we need a motion, I'll move that we can make the change then to, to make it more consistent with the, the rest of the country. I'll, I'll second the motion. Marvin, second. Your motion is not only changing the name but adopting the logo, is that correct? For clarification. Yeah. And logo. Yeah. Very good. Is there any discussion or questions about that? If not all in favor, aye. That should be upgrading the public address system here in the boardroom. Eric, can you fill us in on the status of that? I've been uh, participating in some contacts that were never interested in, in um, since, you know, that project. I reached out to like a couple of them and we could buy five by one. one. I have scheduled a webinar with them so they can showcase the product to me tomorrow and for me. Um, I've also been attempting to reach out to a local person that I know that I've heard is very good down down equipment and uh, possibly do it for a reasonable price. I haven't been successful in contacting them yet. Um, Unfortunately, that's where I have. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten my call. So, so. Okay, we'll, we'll table that till next month and hope to get more positive information then. And kicking a can down the road on this one, I only need to bring it to a head if we can, so. Okay, very good, thank you. Everybody has in front of them a, a communication that was received from the, the Illinois Department of Revenue regarding Public Act 99-517. And what this is, is, is a piece of legislation that, as I understand it, makes it possible for local government to receive further information about the sales tax. Who it is that's paying the sales tax, and, uh, I guess the amounts and so forth. Uh, I guess the question, it's an opportunity to participate in that if we just so, so desire. It may be something that we need to study for a while. I don't think there's any date by which we have to decide to participate or not. But uh, Mindy, do you have some further information? No, on I don't. I got the same email, and I don't. Don't know any more about it. Okay. I guess because it's new, I probably would suggest that we study it uh, before reaching any decision on the matter. But just you know, because I don't know a whole lot about it either. To me, I think. One of the things that we need to decide about is that if the information is mostly confidential, uh, there are restrictions as to who can receive that information and what use they might make of it. So I think our decision should be uh, in deciding whether we want to do it or not, we should decide because of the confidentiality of it, what benefit are we going to get from it. How will we implement that if, if we choose to do it? So if, again, I I would ask Mindy to do the same thing. 
we you know, something that information that might be of value to us in understanding the ec economic operations of the county much better than we can right now. But I think again, it's something that we want to be a little bit cautious in doing. Make sure it's something we want to do before we sign up for it. If we have this information, is it something that somebody can FOIA or no. it's confidential no, so it cannot be FOIA? It's confidential. People, people it, 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 it kind of, when you, you read through it, you'll get a little better understanding. And I have, I've read through it, but I probably need to study it some more. My understanding that we have to prepare a list of, of individuals who would be authorized to receive that information. And they would be bound to keep it confidential. There would be, uh, if they if they violate that, they be guilty of a could be found guilty of a misdemeanor and fined accordingly. So it's it's sensitive information and it cannot be avoided. It's, like I said, it has to be kept confidential within the realms of probably a few people or whomever we might decide should have access to that information. And that's why I say. We have, we have to decide, decide what uses we might make of that information. How would it benefit us to, to know these things? Yeah, yeah the uh, John, the, the sales tax thing is something real important because that's a, a good way for local governments to increase their revenue. And knowing where the best places to get the money, it's good to know because you can see it a lot closer. Because in the reports that she receives now. It's very convoluted for a given reason. That's because, like, if I was interested in selling, say, furnaces, furnaces up in Lyle's backyard, I could go in and tell exactly how many furnaces that were being sold at sales tax. And as a, a competitive business, I could pull information that would not be good for, in this case, the local furnace salesman. So it's got to be confidential, but yet at the same time, uh, your local government needs to be able to see it so they can uh, know where they need to be going toward new revenue. And when we are, along with the Green's Ivy Group, we're trying to get the growth of the county to be something that will be better than it has been, and this is information that possibly could help in that respect. But again, it's something that we need to take a pretty good look at, I think, and there, there may be, we may need further information. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point. There's potentially, I think, some very positive benefits, but there's something we don't want to just jump into because this is the first I see it, and I haven't read through all the language. Apparently, apparently this act was just passed last summer. I think it says effective June 30th of 2016, so we're just finding out about it now. discussion on having the ICPHD Board of Health present a report to the County Board during outside organizational reports. This was brought up by Mr. Hasmargan at the last County Board meeting and I thought perhaps we should put it on the agenda today to decide whether or not items like this should be included or not. So I appreciate the thoughts of the committee. Well, I think the uh, Health Committee has a very good report right now. I, uh, I don't know if the full county board needs the same report, even though at points there's some, everybody needs to pay attention to some of her reports because over the years I've seen a lot of little issues come out in the health department in the past that gives you a little more heads up, uh, a lot of issues in your neighborhood that you're going to be looking at a year down the road. <laughs> So, but at this point, as far as the full board, I don't think the full board really needs the same information that the committee got. I'm a little puzzled. We get reports from the health department, but we, you know, the county board gives a ton of money to the mental health department, and we never hear any reports from them. Why? Why? What goes on? Good question. The same thing is true of the 377 board. True. Mm -hmm. uh, 
911 reports to the Judicial Committee. So, I mean, it's the same as the Health Department reporting to the Health Committee. So, I think those are factors that might enter into the discussion also. I, I see no point in uh, an additional report to the County Board when it's reported to the committee. The County Board can attend the committee meetings. Okay, are there any further thoughts on that? Mr. Uh, uh, Harris, I, I believe by my hand, I believe part of that's not that is the committee. I believe maybe maybe state state would be brought out of their full board. board. I think I think that if you examine your paperwork that's given to you at every board meeting, you see that the final approval of all the claims are is done by the county board. In other words, all the claims that are approved at the finance committee receive final approval at the county board meeting. Does the county board board approve their claims? No, we don't approve them. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We don't have to have to have to have to have to Claims are presented at the county board meeting, at the end of the county board meeting. There's three different stapled together list of claims. One of those is for the board, for the health department, which is claims that's already been approved by the board of health and or the board of health finance committee. You know, I could get a... I, excuse me, just other reports, other boards like we just talked about, the 911 board, those claims are not approved by the county board. Mental health department, those claims are not approved by the county board. Mr. Thicknoth makes a very cogent point there. Why aren't, why, you know, that's taxpayer money. Well, I'm, just, I'm addressing your, your comment, you know, about the, board, about the health department. I think duplication is something that we have to take a, a good look at in, in matters like this. And I think in this case, I think that, that the health department's finances are already adequately addressed as well as they could be. Some of these other areas might be something for us to look at going forward. But my feeling is that the health department is under an awful lot of scrutiny right now. Uh, I think they're is a situation there that you have to ask yourself, a lot of money is paid to the health department administrative function, wasting their time by having double and triple scrutiny. <coughs> I think they have a job to do that they should be spending their time at, not constantly reporting the different functions of the county board. So that, I mean, that's my feeling about it. It seems like the rest of the committee seems to echo that. So. But the claims that you brought up are approved. Final approval for those claims is done by the county board. So if we, if we did the approval, we'll rely on the board of health, you think? Well, I guess that's, that's a good question. I don't think we do that. Well, final approval, when, you, when the claims are presented for approval at the county board meeting, it's a very rare occurrence in my experience in my time on this board that the claims are not approved. It happens very seldom, if at all. So I, that's a hard question for them to answer. If you don't approve the claims, you create, obviously create a tremendous problem for the operation of the county. So, you know, you know this, that's a question that can come up many times about approving claims as such because you're approving money that's already been spent are already contracted to be spent. I believe it's already put to the board of health control money. We only give them that we're done with it. That's already what they want to do, too. You can't help with all the money. I don't think that. As far as my opinion on the reports, I can get up and read the health committee report and then <coughs> um, the chairman of the health committee could get up and read it again. I think it's a little redundant. Are there any 
further discussion on this? to the reviewing the policy on smoking and tobacco products. Everybody has a copy of this. In front of them is the current policy regarding smoking and tobacco product use. Most of you, I believe, are aware that we had an incident occur here on Sunday where there was a, a situation that prompts us to review this policy and to see what can be done to prevent further occurrences of that situation. Uh, is there anybody here that's not familiar with what occurred on Sunday? <coughs> okay. A couple of the questions that have come up. <coughs> has to do with establishing a designated smoking area. The policy states that smoking and use of tobacco products is permitted only in designated exterior areas. It doesn't say where those areas should be. I believe that the particular incident that we're discussing occurred because there isn't, I don't know if that was a designated area or not, that was involved here, but apparently there's been some lax demonstrated throughout the air, uh, the buildings, not just here, but over at the courthouse as well, in the jail. As to where these designated smoking areas are and, and who might be authorized to use them. So the thought becomes, where, 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 where should we establish the designated smoking areas and who should do it? Right now, according to this policy, the department heads and supervisors designate those areas. But I believe we can establish some parameters that will help in designating those areas. For example, how far should they be away from the building? Uh, what type of surface area should they be in? Should it be a concrete or blacktop area? Uh, should it be how far away from any combustible materials? Uh, I believe there's been, and I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I believe there may be at least one one individual, and I can I can see where this could happen, where somebody might be outside smoking and. All of a sudden, they have to come back in, so they put out their cigarette that just got lit up, and they put it back in their pocket. And they don't know if it's completely extinguished or not. When they do that, they come back in and hang up their coat. If it wasn't completely extinguished, their coat could catch on a fire, and you could have a bigger problem. So these are some of the things that we need to consider. Also, if you look down at the bottom under Procedure in Section 4, It says the department head or supervisor will designate exterior non-smoking areas. I think that might be a error there. I think it should be designate exterior smoking areas, not non-smoking areas. So this is something that uh, we can talk about it today. We can we can bring it up again next month, whatever be your pleasure on it. But I think it's something we need to address pretty quickly. And in light of the incident on Sunday night, I think it's something that needs some clarification so we don't have a repeat. What what is a law as far as distance from the door and all that? Fifteen feet from the public entrance. But non-public entrance is fifteen feet from the public entrance. So only public entrance. So employee entrance. Employee entrance. Don't don't don't. Legal legal. If it's posted on the door, it has to be posted that it's an employee only entrance. In my mind.
Well, it was an unfortunate situation on Sunday, and I don't know all the details on it. We can only imagine that somebody just made some mistakes, and other people made mistakes behind that. Uh, at this point, I'd hate to see any type of knee-jerk reaction, so I think it's something we got to look at, but I think the uh, department head did an excellent job over the years of keeping it under control, and uh, I think the employees are happy with how they did it in the past, so I wouldn't want to see no quick change just because of... I, I, I tend to agree with that. I think, however, that if our policy for at least provides some guidance in mm. establishing these areas and so forth, I think that probably would be a proper thing to do. Yeah. I, I don't know how many people currently are involved in smoking uh, you know, in the county. I know yeah. some, but I don't know all of it. Well, the mulch should be treated like a Christmas tree. Spray it down good before you use it. Well, there's other, there's other things to consider, too, that are, you know, for example, if you look across the other side of the driveway at those fir trees, there's a lot of dry needles there, and if somebody just happens to be smoking by their car and puts a cigarette away, you know, and again, that's the situation. Do we wait till we have a catastrophic event, or do we try to put something in a place beforehand to... Or gold light that will cause a problem there, too. Or car backfire, I mean... Yeah, risk management, there's no man. Well, I guess the question is, do we want to consider making changes to this policy in uh, some of these areas? <coughs> Just leave it up to the department heads to exercise <coughs> judgment on this. I agree with Russell. The knee-jerk reaction that needs to do something quickly is a good idea in itself. Either detable it or the way it's worked for the last however many years has worked pretty well with not an obvious exception. But, uh, I don't feel it's necessary to quickly make a change, especially given the incident that occurred. But I don't, I don't think it's anything that, that's that pressing at the moment. I think it could be tabled and discussed for further Polk County Board or possibly a management committee. Since it'd be a management committee building that burns down. <laughs> The policy is the policy is something that the responsibility of this committee. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just don't feel, feel it. This I, I don't. I don't feel it's imperative at the moment. You get rushed through. I think it'd be a good thing to kind of sit back and get some other opinions on it and see how some things play out first. Maybe do any department heads have any thoughts on this? Well, I don't think, you know, I, my understanding is this was not an intentional act by any stretch of the imagination. But, I mean, things happen. It did come from cigarette risk, we're assuming it did, but she keeps her butt, so we assume that she didn't even know it. But a number came off her cigarette and went into the mulch. And that's how, but that's how we're swimming. The fire department was telling us to stop by a cigarette, but, but she had her butt, so she did not purposely just to clarify the mission. I don't think anybody is saying that it was on our purpose, but it's just a... It was a free thing. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think the department heads are all acutely aware now that this could happen, and I'm sure they will give uh, attention to that, so I'm not sure we need to do anything more. on to the appointments. I'm not sure that we have anything at the moment other than the 377 board. I still want to come up with a candidate for that. So I'm not aware of any other appointments that are coming up. So. 
to move on to correspondence. All kinds of correspondence.
can everybody look at it and we can talk about it. It's a way we can put our county on this map because that's probably the most important thing. That's what I said. I probably should it briefly there. Can we do it now? For everybody's information, the letter that I was looking at right now comes from a person appointed by the governor regarding the 2018 the state is celebrating their 150th anniversary. Anyway, there there may be an opportunity for us to get a grant of I think upwards of two hundred thousand dollars to do something in the county, and so it's something that uh, I think we probably should take a look at, see if we can get some more information about it. Uh, but this is the first that we're aware of it, so something to take a look at and see exactly what ideas, if, if we want to pursue this, which we may well, well do, I believe, but uh, exactly what, what we might put together to do that, I think, is what we need to look at. So. This is where the original history really started happening back in the old days. <coughs> We're a big player. In. We can see if we can get some more information about it and put it on the agenda for the next month's meeting and then we'll start the ball moving forward in that respect. Any other questions regarding the, the uh, correspondence? If not, we'll move on to the claims. So we all well had a chance to review the claims. Any questions regarding the claims? <coughs> so moved. <coughs> Motion by Russell Bills to approve the claims. Uh, second. Entering the seconds. Any further discussion? If not, we'll call the roll, please, Amanda. Raymond? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bill? Yes. Signot? Yes. yes. Sure? Yes. That motion passes. Any old business today? Any new business? Motion to adjourn. Barron? Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Wake up, folks. Oh, we are.